Before the Nissan Z came equipped with two turbos, an interior that looked like its brother, and enough turbo lag to rip your little chin hairs off stock, there was another car that aimed to do the same. A refined take, if you will. A whiskey glass to the bush light to see if the North American market would truly like a Japanese V6. I'm Alex, Alex Martini with two underscores on Instagram, and today we're talking about how to modify the Nissan 300ZX. <laughs> car parts Magic car martini works so we can keep filming videos in 34 degree garages i'm not kidding it's fucking cold in here we just added gretty and canon on the site as well and if you need any help we're here to answer any questions you may have on wheels tires suspension or more for your car subscribe and let's get into this beautiful heavy gal all right the nissan 300 zx the official car for people who say i like meat on my bones which is Kind of gross when I say it out loud because when I wrote it, it seemed funnier. But the Fair Lady Z, as it was sold in Japan, would come to us from 1983 to 2000. Iconic Nissan timelines when you really think about it, ain't it? But America got the one from 1984 to 1996. Alex, that doesn't mean, that doesn't make any sense. The pretty 300 ZX wasn't made in 1983. It was, just not here. The Z31 was that weird one between the pretty pretty one and the 280ZX that I will argue to the day that I die isn't even close to my baby in terms of looks, the 280Z. The Z31 walked though so the Z32 could soar! Kah! You see, I say on Toshio Yamashita went wide as hell with this design, encompassing a more VIP style look with more technology than DVD players before Netflix offed them. The non-turbo 3 liter VG30 came with variable valve timing and dual overhead cams to give it a bump above 222 horsepower, which was on par with the Mitsubishi 3000 GT SL at the time. But the big dog, the twin turbo, the twin turbocharged big daddy, Garrett sponsored dual intercool looking ass, which gave us 300 horsepower and 284 foot pounds of torque is the one we're talking about. It was spending too much of its time with its influencer teenage friends too, because it would get two mode suspension like the VR4. It get four wheels steering like the VR4. Also like the VR4, it sometimes broke a lot. My glory has it. It's actually pretty cool. But we wanted our hair in the wind, babes. We wanted to feel like the impending doom of Y2K was just a Fox News special. So the Z32s came with a T-top, the second greatest thing to come from the 80s next to the Rubik's Cube. This car came at peak JDM tuner era, right before the downfall. You had HKS making super sick versions called the SR71. Blackhawk reference. And still in doing upgrades that were backed by factory. The thing was, it was more expensive, it was more ridiculous, and it was more available than pretty much any other US competitor at the time. And it showed, because it was expensive as f to buy, but the Nissan 300ZX became the most successful sports car in the 1990 model year. Unfortunately, that lasted less than 24 months because the yen turned out to be as valuable as a $2 bill outside of it being a $2. My jokes suck today, holy hell, whatever. The car had a few different versions, but most that are left that people like you or people like me would want are either the base model Boo. Or the twin turbo, okay? Which is also known as the Tiny Hand Mechanic Edition version, okay? And let's clear the air. The 300ZX, in my opinion, is one of the most beautiful 90s JDM cars ever made, or USDM. I think it gives the RX-7 a run for its money. It's definitely better than the bloated VR4 Gen 2 that came later in the 90s, and it's designed to be a near timeless car. If you buy one of these and you get the right spec, just hold on to it. You got a gem. The Nissan 300ZX, the official car of Nissan. You had it, what'd you do? They didn't compromise on this car. The 3,500 pound curb weight was the perfect example of not compromising, but it didn't stop companies like Paul Newman Racing to take the car and win the Trans Am back in like 1986. It raced an IMSA GT championship with a VG30 ET making over a thousand horsepower. It was in the 24 hour of Le Mans. It came with more tech than sense. It was everything Nissan could possibly put in a car and to some, that was its downfall. So how do you modify a Nissan 300ZX? Well, you start by crying, just a little bit, because some of this is gonna suck. The 300ZX has a platform that is golden for either keeping it stock or being in the hands of an expert shop that knows every little teeny tiny detail of how this car works. There's no in between. To keep the engine running healthy, make sure the 120,000 mileage maintenance was done so you can be like starting with a good bone car. Because the weight and girth of this bad boy 
we're gonna say the first recommendation is jumping into coilovers okay if you're on a budget go bc racing br series and if you're looking to do something outside of that you're probably gonna pay more brs are eleven hundred dollars and we'll tighten up the car a ton if you want something a bit more stout then the 510 series fortunatos will get the job done but that's really only if you plan to track the car which if you are tires and brakes are huge on these things you see the na cars are heavy and slow but still fun the twin turbo versions are heavy and less slow but tough to muscle around if you don't really get the whole weight transfer thing, right? If you turn hard, the weight transfers in the opposite direction of where you're trying to go. At one and a half tons, this does that a lot. The lower you get in the center of gravity, which on this thing is gonna help loads, it's just gonna make the car feel way better. If it's a daily driver, the DWS 06 Continental tires work great, and if you want something more track-oriented, Extreme Continental Sport 02s. The 300ZX, the official car, of car forums. From there, 18 by 9.5 plus 22 and 10.5 plus 22 rears are stout. You can go wider here, but you're going to sacrifice tire size that you can run. For tire size, we recommend 245 35s in the front and 275 35s in the rear. And if you want to go with something more crazy, reach out to us and we can figure out what will work or not work. Now, five spokes belong on this car. Gram lights, work, Volk, or Conse Corsas look wicked as well. If you want something a bit different, you could play with like some multi spoke style wheels like the Enki RS05 R. Ours, but that will make the car kind of look a little futuristic. Mesh BBSs go hard as a set of anti sway bars from ST, a Canon intake kit, and a Magnaflow or HKS exhaust, and you're pretty much set. And here's where you're gonna wanna do more. You're gonna wanna enter the tune zone, okay? The tune zone is a fun place to be with these cars because the cooling is decent, the turbos are stout, and the twin turbos will build fairly well from an engine perspective. But you're gonna have to be careful because the tune zone of these cars isn't as well supported as it once was. So tread carefully, especially with non-turbo cars as those engines are not as stout as their twin turbo counterparts, okay? Because of the weight, going with some EBC brake pads or stop tech are a fantastic way to go. And while you're in there, upgrade it to some steel brake lines and you'll be set for growing out like a mullet and putting the T-top to work. But Alex, I have a non-turbo car. If you have an on-turbo car, it's still sick. Just do the following, okay? Put your car on a diet. It's a heavy chunker right now, okay? Coilovers, tires, and wheels all are the same recommended feedback for you, okay? Four tunes, though. You can tune it, but you have to ensure your ECU is an 8-bit ECU only. That's 90 to 92 naturally aspirated, a 93 vert, or a 90 to 94 twin turbo. It's like I'm playing fucking Zelda over here. Spend a little bit more time enjoying how the car looks versus trying to get it to do twin turbo things, though, because it's not built the same. If you haven't bought one yet and you're trying to save some cash, I'd recommend not trying to find a cheap one. Why, you may ask? <coughs> Well, because these cars suffer the Subaru dilemma, okay? Good car, low tolerance to bullshit, and can be the worst thing you ever own if you don't treat her right. You know what I'm saying? So buckle up for potential problems. Brought to you by us. Number one, low mileage cars are exponentially better on this platform, okay? Just how it is. Number two, the paint sucks to repair on these cars. If it's faded, it's staying faded forever. Number three, alternators go out every 50,000 miles like a broke college kid on a Friday night. Just prepare for it. Number four, clutch bearings go out and sound wildly loud. No, it's not a quirk. Something is about to fail. And another one, brakes are used exaggeratively amount. That doesn't even make any sense. The brakes are used a lot because the car is really heavy. They're gonna need to be repaired more. So if you have, you know, OEM brakes, just consider yourself needing to upgrade them. You just will. It's gonna help you, it's gonna help me, it's probably gonna help the person you might accidentally rear end, it's just trust us. And something that's really interesting you may not know is that it's been known that turbo models before January of 1990 and NA cars before July of 1990 had defective valves that are just kind of goofy and they just unscrew themselves causing catastrophic failures. So now which one you get? So how do you modify a 300ZX? Easy baby, you spend 30, <coughs> Oh, I can't. Thirty to forty thousand dollars on a turbo, or twenty thousand dollars on a naturally aspirated version, only to question every choice you ever made for T-tops. But it's okay. Things are fine because the headlights are from a Lamborghini. From there, you're gonna spend around twelve hundred bucks on a set of BC Racing coilovers if you daily it, or seventeen hundred on a set of Fortunes if you aim to track this thing. But that's not before realizing that the tires have to be replaced and the brakes are absolutely shot because the car's so goddamn heavy. Say it with me. If it helps me with weight, 
I must purchase it. Good. Follow that rule because sway bars will help with that and a good buff job will bring this wildly cool paint job back to life. From there, understand that everyone is going to think you now own a weird Ferrari or a Fiero, but no one that isn't a car person will think that it's a Nissan and you'll magically find a gold chain around your neck one day and take an appreciation for Guy Fieri. The maintenance on the car will hurt your pocket and your mental stability as working on these cars is worse than listening to your racially charged grandpa talk about a recent Marvel movie in public, but that won't matter because this car is fun as hell to drive. As long as you can get over the fact that you're paying the same price for a damn near 40 year old car as a Toyota GR86. But most importantly, if you're looking for a 300ZX Magic Car at Martini Works, if you have one already built, add it to our build threads on the website. It takes a couple minutes. You can share your story with photos and drop a comment below on one thing you wish you knew before buying one. I'm Alex, Alex Martini with two underscores on Instagram, and we'll see you on the next one. Peace.